The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is episode 486 of the Short Time Wrestling Podcast. My name is Jason Bryant. We are kicking off 2019 with a preview of the multi-divisional national duels coming up in Louisville, Kentucky on January 4th and 5th. And before we get to that, I want to thank you for listening. Thank you for listening since 2013. 486 is actually the count, but I know I've done over 500 short times. I just I, I lost count somewhere, and I've just been sticking with the track, uh, and then and the number that it's been ever since. I don't know where it was. It might have been at National Duels like three four years ago. I don't know, but I'm saying this is 486 with over a thousand episodes produced, almost 2,000 on the network over the course of the last several years. So if this is your first time checking out a wrestling podcast, maybe you got a new iPhone, maybe you got something new for Christmas, and you're checking out that podcast app on your iPhone, or if you've got uh, you know, checking out the Google Play, Google Play Music, Google Podcasts, all that stuff, and you're finding this show, hey, welcome. This show's about wrestling and a lot of different things about wrestling. And it's not just everything about the top level of wrestling. There is every single level of wrestling from high school and youth wrestling all the way up to the Olympic Games. And I would say beyond, but, uh, oh, well, you know, if like Tom Brands used to say, if there's, there's, there's life out there on other planets, maybe the battle's universal. But this show, we're talking a lot about wrestling. And this show is also user supported. And I don't want to throw a, 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 a plug at you for, uh, you know, compensation or uh, contribution right off the bat. But those of you that listen to this show know that this is a listener supported show. We got another team member that has joined the fray by going to matttalkonline.com slash join the team. That is Kyle Maddie. Hey, thanks. Welcome aboard. We will get your awesome shirt and stickers out in the mail to you soon. I had a bunch of those sent out. And Brian Solo, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get apologize to you right right now because uh, i had all the boxes sent out i put them out on social media like a december 14th and then i get back from the midlands where i was doing the pa announcing there it was a great tournament by the way and my wife goes hey there was a box that slid behind the uh the buffet and we have this like old uh old dresser that we use in our mud room for a buffet basically for a mail and you know the kids shoes and such shit we took the drawers out of but that notwithstanding the this box that i had had postmarked had fell behind it and, and i looked at it in the name when i got back i'm like oh Dude, <laughs> so I'm going to be dropping that in the mail by the time you listen to this episode, I hope, uh, because by the time I press record, I will be on the way to like Whole Foods or something like that. But anyway, also got a contribution from Scott Ward. Thank you, sir. And uh, I'm guessing there's a tie there between the Connor Ward episode we did with Little Rock. That was kind of a, a prelude of what I've got coming with the Little Rock show. We're looking at names still. And I think we're we're pretty close to locking one down with Coach Neil Ayersman and what we're going to do with that program here on the Matt Talk Podcast Network. Oh, what other things to talk about? Yeah, okay, real quick about the network again, just to say if this is the first time you're listening or if you only listen to this show or if you listen to Matt Talk's main feed where you pick up everything on the feed. So we have 24, 25, maybe I think it's up to 27 different shows that have been on or are active on the network. Now, there are shows that have retired. We like to use the term pod fade. There are shows that have been retired, but they are still available on the network at matttalkonline.com. Now, this calendar year, and well, this past calendar year, 2018, the Matt Talk Podcast Network put out 399 podcast episodes. Now, last year, we did 441. There were some things that came up uh, over in the month of December that really kept me and my family busy. Uh, those of you who know about that, I've kind of leaked a little bit about that on Facebook, but thank you for reaching out. Uh, my daughter, Lucy, is back at school, and she is uh, happy to be a first grader, but those really kind of limited things with the December Short Time Shot Show, so uh, that's a little bit about why there was a little bit fewer episodes uh, in the grand scheme of things than there was uh, this in 2017, there were 2018 also had some shows that, uh, decided to, uh, go, go their own way. Uh, you also learn if you listen to the show, um, uh, I suck at, um, this type of singing thing. I do crush a couple karaoke songs. That is about it. So, uh, if you've got a show and if you're interested in actually having a podcast, there's several teams on the network. I produce those shows for those teams. So if you are interested in having a show for whether it be your high school, your club, and uh, you've, you're looking to uh, get that professional production quality, maybe even a voiceover by yours truly, uh, reach out to me at jason at bryantwrestling.com. There's also a contact page at matttalkonline.com. And, you know, we can get the show rolling. We can talk about how to do it right. And even if, okay, how about this? Stop. Even if you aren't going to use the services that I provide, 
which I I will I will say are pretty much uh, you're going to if you're going to try to go outside of wrestling and find this, you're going to be paying uh, significantly a ton more money. Secondly, if you're going to start a show, please at least ask me beforehand. I am willing to give you some advice on what to, what do's and don'ts, some things. I mean, if you want to have a full blown consulting call, we can do that. But there are certain things that are just like painful, like, oh, I've got an aneurysm because I've seen a, a great idea for a show end up with uh, either w- whether it be wrong equipment, whether it be bad hosting, whether it be on platforms that don't have longevity, whether it be, uh, you know, calling something. It's just I, I, I'm here to help. I'm not here to, to uh, you know, I don't want to like sound like, you know, it's not mansplaining, for example. But if, if you've got questions about putting a podcast out, just email me. Just contact me on Twitter at Jason M. Bryant. My DMs are open. I'm always glad to help you. Always. And you know what? I don't charge for for just general help. OK, you know, if you want a full blown consulting call, we can work on that. We can if you want me to walk up and set up your show and then you handle it, we can do that. You know, I've done that for people, too. So, like I said, we're in the year 2019. We've got great topics to talk about. There is no shortage of wrestling podcasts out there. I mean, the first one we had was Wrestling 411 10 years ago, and now there's over 50. And there's a lot more that have come and gone since then. So we've had probably close to 100 shows in this medium over the past 10 years. So 15 years, actually, podcast me think started in 2004-ish. Uh, anyway, I'm rambling on. So without further ado, I give you, hold on as I take a swig of water here just so I can tone it up. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to leave that in the show because, okay, you ready? This is the TLDR version of a 5,000-word preview I wrote for the NWCA. And for full disclosure, I still do uh, some of their press releases and coordinate the Division One rankings. So here we go. And uh, this does reflect the change that I had to make this morning. All right, you ready? And cue the swoosh. Multi-divisional national duels. Here we go. With nearly 320 wrestlers from 84 teams converging this weekend on the Kentucky Expo Center and Freedom Hall in Louisville, Kentucky, the name Matt Mayhem remains an adequate descriptor of what's to come on January 4th and 5th as New Way hosts the NWCA Multi-Divisional National Duels presented by the United States Marine Corps and Defense Soap. I just also want to say that it's also one of the shortest titles they've had for this event in some time. Five different collegiate divisions will come to Louisville, and I'm saying it correctly, for the first time in a dual meet advancement format to crown a national dual meet champion. As the draws were officially released on Wednesday, press release went out on Thursday morning. And if you scroll down that, you'll see links, 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 links. Uh, it's on track wrestling, pay-per-view. Okay, competing teams. Uh, we have a bunch of them. I'll get to that here shortly. So, as I said, all this is available at mattalkonline.com, NWCA website at nwcaonline.com, and they're tweeting it out. So, hashtag Matt Mayhem. Are you ready for the long haul? Okay, top bracket division two. St. Cloud State is looking to win its third straight national duels crown and a fifth overall. Currently riding a Division II best 35-match win streak, the Huskies will be the top seed and open with Seton Hill in what was a rematch of last year's final, in which St. Cloud State won 41 to nothing. Yeah, they're pretty good. The Huskies, 7-0, and bring a Division II best eight nationally ranked wrestlers in the field to Louisville. I'm going to say that a lot. Led by top-ranked 125-pounder and 2016 NCAA Division II champion Brett Velazquez and top-ranked 197-pounder Vince Dietz, a D2 runner-up a year ago. Winner of the duel faced the winner of the Upper Iowa West Liberty duel in the quarterfinals. Upper Iowa, which is seated eighth, has four nationally ranked wrestlers to contend with, led by Justin Foley at 133 and Dalton Hahn at 184 pounds. Those pair, well, that pair, yeah, pair, words, troublesome. They come in ranked seventh. One matchup between ranked foes that could take place, and that's at 197 pounds, where West Liberty's Logan Kemp is ranked seventh, and Upper Iowa's returning All-American Nick Baumler is ranked number 12. Despite its amazing wrestling tradition, the Mountain Cats of Pitt Johnstown have never finished higher than third at the National Duels. That third place finish came back in 2016, and longtime coach Pat McCourt's squad will come to Louisville with five ranked wrestlers, including top-ranked returning Division II national champion Chris Eddins at 149 pounds. The Mountain Cats will open with Ford Hayes State, which is placed in the top eight just once in school history. Coach Chaz Thompson's teams finished fifth back in 2014. Key matchup here is a possible national final at 133 pounds, as 2017 All-American Brandon Ball is ranked second for Fort Hayes State, while UPJ counters with third-ranked Joey Alessandro. Winner of this duel will advance to the quarters to face either University of Indianapolis or number four, Nebraska Kearney. 
while Nebraska Kearney is number four ranked in Division Two. That ranking is based on tournament point projections on how teams' individual wrestlers are slotted in the rankings. I hate those. Division Two Coaches Association set the national dual seeds on strength by representatives voting in each region. So that's how that works for the top eight. That's why there's a difference. The Lopers will face a UND team that could make things interesting as the Greyhounds. Go, go, Greyhounds. Uh, shout out Jackie Paquette and Jason Wortham. They were on short time not that long ago. The Greyhounds have three ranked wrestlers in the mix, while the Lopers bear, boast. I can't even read my own writing here. The Lopers boast a pair of top ranked wrestlers in Matt Malcolm at 157 and Calvin Oaks at 165. Top matchup comes at heavyweight as UND's Dylan Falkenberg. I just think of that movie, Nothing But Trouble, when I hear his name. Uh, Falkenberg comes in ranked third, ahead of returning All-American and fifth-ranked Jared Hendricks. In the bottom bracket, third-seeded Notre Dame College is loaded again as the Falcons have five-ranked wrestlers and return All-Americans Keelan McKenna at 133 pounds, Tony Vizzetti at 184, and Cameron Teacher at 285. They'll face Wisconsin Parkside, which returns All-Americans Eric Fursith at 133 pounds, and James Lehman, who was an All-American at 197 last season but competed at 184. This season, winner will advance to take on either number six Lindenwood or Wheeling Jesuit. While Seton Hill was the unseeded team making a run to the finals last year, the year prior, it was Wheeling Jesuit that crashed the party. The Cardinals again find themselves unseeded, opening up with number six Lindenwood. But with 11 ranked wrestlers between the two teams and three matches head to head involving ranked wrestlers, the key for advancing in this tight duel will be bonus points. Third ranked Carlos Jaquez of Lindenwood has been on fire recently, winning the Midwest Classic. He'll face fifth ranked Cole Laya. Danny Swan was also a solid fifth at the Midwest Classic, and he'll match up with returning All American Tyler Warner of Wheeling Jesuit at 133. Duel could come down to a pair of ranked heavyweights, as Wheeling Jesuit has a strong presence, kind of understating it, with returning national champion Terrence Fanning. Lyndon Wooden could counter with, get this, 11th ranked Corvassier Morrow. Corvassier. True that. The rest of that quarter bracket involves seventh seeded Central Oklahoma squaring off with Gannon and second seeded McKendry drawing limestone to open the round. UCO is placed in the top eight 15 times and was the 2002, wow, 2002, that was 16, 17 years ago. Jeez, that was a while ago. 2002 winner of the event. And the Broncos, yes, that's spelled with an H, have three ranked individuals. Gannon's topped individual is fifth ranked George McGuire at 157. McKendry is a solid number two seed, and the Bearcats are looking to set a new program record for highest men's finish. The team finished fifth in 2017, and while the school's women's program has two National Duels runner-up finishes to its credit, McKendry is now bolstered by the availability of Michael Pixley. Yeah, you might remember him. He's a past NAI National Champion transfer from Grandview, who had previously been a runner-up at Lindsey Wilson. With no ranked wrestlers, Limestone will have a monumental, monumental, monumental task ahead of it, should the Saints want to be this season's Cinderella. In Division Three, 24 teams in the Division Three field. The top eight seeds will have opening round buys. That being said, the depth of Division Three is continually growing, but the power still remains centered around the Bergs, Augsburg, and Wartburg. Combined, they've won all 17 previous iterations of the Division Three National Duels, and they're seeded one and two again this year. Number one, Augsburg brings eight ranked wrestlers, including two number ones to Louisville, while number two, Augsburg has six ranked wrestlers and a pair of top ranked contenders. That's competitors, actually. Augsburg, the returning National Duels champions, will draw the winner of the Chicago Centenary Duel. Centenary comes to the event with the nation's top ranked 197 pounder and All-American Etini Udat. Chicago has two ranked wrestlers. They have the Maroons, actual charter member of the Big Ten, if you did not know that. And they have an... All-American in the name of Steve Bonsell at 157. Number eight, York College of Pennsylvania, Sparty Gangrene. They will see the opening round runner between UW Lacrosse and Augustana, the one in Illinois. The key matchup to watch there is a pair of returning Division Three All-Americans. All Augustana's, oh, can't speak, can't speak, speak. These are heavyweights. Augustana's Adarius Jones, who plays third at 2017, and fourth-ranked Conrad Ernst of Wisconsin Lacrosse. Ernst was sixth last year. York is led by three-time Division Three All-American Gregory Warner and 149 pounds, and the Spartans, you got that Spartan spirit, will bring three ranked wrestlers and a formidable dual squad to, say it with me, Louisville. Number five, Wabash has four ranked wrestlers, including top-ranked All-American Darden Schurg at 174. The Little Giants will have an opening round by and face the winner of the duel between Luther and number 12 Wisconsin Whitewater. The Warhawks, that's Whitewater, in case you're wondering, are in their first year under head coach Matt Zwaschka and bring in two nationally ranked wrestlers to the field, including All-American Mike Tortorici at 125 pounds. Number four, Ithaca has four returning All-Americans and leading in, uh, man, Richard Emmel is texting me while I'm trying to, trying to do my show. BDI, cease and desist. 
Deep breath. Let's start that over again, right? This is this is how you're getting. I'm not editing this. I'm just going raw. Number four, Ithaca has four returning All-Americans and leading the Bombers are Ben Brisman, a returning Division Three national champion who comes in ranked number two at 141, along with top-ranked All-American Jake Ashcraft at 184 pounds. Marty Nichols' squad awaits the winner of the duel between Johns Hopkins and number 13 seed Olivet. In the bottom bracket, number three, Johnson & Wales has emerged out of Rhode Island and staked its claim to be a perennial contender in Division Three. The Wildcats have five ranked wrestlers in the top seven, including returning national champion Jay Albus at 125. He's got a lot of press this year. With four returning All-Americans and a battle-tested squad, the Wildcats are a threat down low to jump out to a big lead in every duel. They'll face the winner of Heidelberg, Milliken, while Milliken is the big blue. Yep, big blue, kind of like that. They have three ranked wrestlers, three-time All-American Chris Williams, Braden Burt, and Keon Jennings. As I said, all of them are actually returning All-Americans. Number 11, Roger Williams will face first-time entrant Greensboro College in the opening round, with the winner facing number six, Mount Union. Roger Williams, wrestler to watch, is 165-pounder Taylor Shea, who's ranked fourth in the country. Mount Union is off to a 10-0 start. Gerard James won the program's second-ever Division III National Championship a year ago and is recently off a seventh-place finish at the Ken Craft Midlands Championships, where he became the first wrestler in school history to place at that prestigious event. James' brother Jordan is ranked ninth at 133. Number seven, Baldwin and Wallace has an it's Baldwin Wallace, excuse me. Number seven, Baldwin Wallace has an opening round buy and will face the winner of the duel between Westminster and number 10 Co. Baldwin Wallace has been on the rise the last half decade, led by head coach Jamie Gibbs. Second ranked Anthony Royo is a two time All American. Keep an eye on him at 165. Co. should be heavy favorites over Westminster, 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 as the program is just in its second year, led by a guy some people might recognize. His name is Mike Ironman. Number two, Wartburg will have an opening round bye and face either number 15, WPI, or UW Eau Claire. The Knights, that's Wartburg, are winners of 11 Division Three National Duels titles and have reached the championship round in each of the last 17 years. That means every single year, Wartburg has been in the finals. Wartburg is 5-6 and six against Augsburg in the finals and 6-0 and oh against everywhere else. Everywhere else. Everyone else. Top-ranked Brock Rathbun and Cross Canone are returning national champions. The NAIA is unique in the way it allows more than one wrestler per weight class to qualify for its year-end national championships. With a max of 12 wrestlers, it also provides teams with various options when it comes to dual meets. The NAIA also ranks 20 wrestlers and the 200 ranked wrestlers in the nation. Uh, yeah, of those 200, 116 are expected to compete in Louisville. Grandview's the top seed and looking for a record-breaking eighth straight National Duels title. They share the record with Division Three Wartburg, which won consecutive titles between 2011 and 2017. That's uh, seven in a row. Grandview's dual meet win streak currently sits at 67 in a row, and their last loss came in the fall of 2013 to Division One Iowa State. Yeah, they almost won that duel. They'll open with Bethany of Kansas, which has three ranked wrestlers, and the best match there could be uh, Ryan Niven, who you might have heard in the finals of the Reno Tournament of Champions against 11th ranked Brandon Lawson Archuleta of Bethany. Grandview, yep, 12 wrestlers ranked in the top 20. Winner of the Grandview-Bethany duel faced the winner of the Missouri Valley-Southern Oregon duel. And while ranked lower by one spot in the NAI ranking, Southern Oregon comes in as the number eight seed. And this one should be back and forth as six of the weights will feature head-to-head -head matchups between ranked wrestlers. Southern Oregon is led by returning All-Americans Chandler Michael. Yes, that's Chandler Michael, not to be confused with the MMA fighter Michael Chandler at 149 pounds and Hunter Hodges at 165. Missouri Valley's big gun, and we're not talking ACDC, although I might, if he makes the finals this year, I might play big gun for the finals because I announced the NAIA championships. Anyway, uh, MoVal's big gun is returning All-American Jesse Gomez, who is second at 285. A Mid-South Conference battle will open up the action for fifth-seeded Lindsey Wilson as the Blue Raiders face off with Campbellsville. Nine of the ten weights will feature ranked wrestlers with five head-to-heads. Lindsey Wilson boasts top-ranked heavyweight Brandon Reed, who's a Kentucky native. That's kind of notable. While Campbellsville has a young squad led by 2017 All-American Jaden Sklapsky. Uh, he enters the event ranked number 12 at 149. The winner will face Williams Baptist or four-seeded the University of the Cumberlands. With 15 wrestlers ranked in the top 20, the Williams Baptist Cumberlands duel has the opportunity to be tight despite the ranking discrepancy. The Patriots and head coach Chris Flieger are still searching out for a lime green Buddha, but they are led by returning national champion Hayden Lee at 125 and top ranked 149 pounder Trey Leon, who was named the NAI Wrestler of the Week after his performance at the Division I dominated Midlands Championships. He just missed placing. He had a, he had a good tournament. Lee and Leon are two of four All Americans in the Cumberlands lineup. They're joined by 197 pounder Eric DeLuce and heavyweight Quandre Chisholm. 
Arkansas's Williams Baptist finished second at the National Duels a year ago and was hit hard by graduation and the transfer of two-time finalist and one-time champion Demetrius Thomas to Division I Pittsburgh. In the bottom bracket, fans are still struggling with the name change, but the University of Providence doesn't seem to have much of an identity crisis, formerly known as Great Falls. The Argonauts! I love it, Jason and the Argonauts. Argonauts! Caleb Schaefer, you are uh, you're, you're an interesting guy. The Argonauts are seated third and will open with Marion, a third-year program making aggressive strides to be nationally competitive. Providence has five wrestlers ranked in the top ten, including returning NAIA runner-up Adrian Lyons-Lopez. And keep an eye on 12th-ranked Brandon James of Marion at 133. He had a pretty successful high school career and has had stops in Division I before landing on the Indianapolis campus. The winner there will face either number six, Life, or Baker in the quarterfinals. Life is led by the program's first national champion, Nosomi Pozo, who return, returns at 157, while Baker has a returning champ of its own in the form of a bad dude, Lucas Lovern. He is good. He's real good. Uh, he'll match up with fifth ranked Lucius Van Rensburg. That's just, uh, that sounds saucy. Number seven, Midland is solid down low with three wrestlers ranked in the top four at 125, 133, and 141, respectively. The Warriors face an up-and-coming Southeastern squad. They're the fire, by the way. F-I-R-E. Fire. Fire. What beats fire? Rock and paper can't beat them. Scissors can't beat them. Fire. Anyway. Southeastern saw the program have its first All-Americans last season, and two of them returned, Dylan Chatterton at 157 and Ethan Owen at 141. Owen will have one of the tallest orders, facing off with David Berg, the second-ranked wrestler in the country at the weight. Berg was third at last season's NAI National Championships at 133, while Owen was seventh at 141. California products Julian and Jonas Gaten are solid at 125 and 133 for Midland, as I noted earlier. Number two, Indiana Tech, another set of Warriors come out and play, has been second at the National Duels two of the last three seasons, but last year they were just seventh. They will open with Cumberland University, which used to be the Bulldogs, now they're the Phoenix a squad that features three ranked individuals compared to Indiana Tech's 12. Six of Indiana Tech's wrestlers are ranked in the top 10, highlighted by returning NAI runner-up Eric Early, along with All-American Sawyer Miller at 125, Gage Torres at 141, and deep breath, Justin Atkinson at 149 pounds. Despite winning the last five National Duels titles, Clackamas will be unable to attend this season, which opens the door for a new winner, for the first time since 2013 in the NJCAA division. That year, LeBlet, 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 that year, LeBlet, I did it again. That year, LeBet claimed the title. And while Northeastern Oklahoma A&M isn't familiar with winning national duels titles in its short history, NEO head coach Joe Renfro, however, is. He led LeBet, LeBet, I said it right that time, to the championship in 2013 before taking over the restarted program at NEO, which is in Miami, not Miami, Oklahoma. The Golden Norsemen, yes, they are. They have the longest, like, name. Like, I mean, the Rochester Community and Technical College, or all those schools have long names, but the Northeastern Oklahoma A&M College Golden Norsemen. That's why they go by NEO. Anyway, the Golden Norsemen will be heavy favorites to advance past Itasca Community College of Minnesota. Not to be confused. You know, I did this when I was researching. I was like, oh, Itasca, that's got to be close to the, 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 you know, the origin of the Mississippi River. Uh, it's up there, but it's, it's like an hour or so away. Anyway. A top individual matchup there pits top-ranked Zeke Silva of Ineo against fourth-ranked Corey Schmidt at 197. Boo Dryden at 133 and Alex Kaufman at 184 are returning All-Americans. And the Ineo Itasca winner will face either number eight, Labette, not Lublet, Lublet, it's Labette or Triton. Only three ranked wrestlers will be featured in that triton Labette duel, but one of them is top-ranked Dylan Pruch at 125 for Labette. Second-ranked Tyree Johnson of Triton was third at last year's NJCAA Championships. This seeded Barton has come on the scene in a hurry as the fourth year program features three ranked wrestlers, including returning All American Gage Gomez at 133. Barton was fifth a year ago, while Muskegon, that's their opponent, their best finish was seventh in 2012. The winner will face either four seeded Nassau or second year Joliet Junior College. Joliet Jake, Jake and Elwood, four fried chickens and a Coke. Nassau winners of a number of non-scholarship NJCAA championships of the years will ma made its return to the national duels and finished eighth last year. Coach Paul Schmidt's Lions will face that Joliet squad with a rich history as head coach A.J. Blahut is trying to recapture that. Go they do, I got some good things going on there in Joliet. Nassau's top gun is top ranked Michael Abbott at 174, while Joliet's lineup does not feature Jake or Elwood Blue, but sixth ranked Rodshawn Graham. 
on the bottom bracket. Northwest Kansas Tech has a noted international feel as two of its three ranked wrestlers hail from Mongolia. Yeah, that Mongolia. They'll face Jamestown Community College of New York in the opening round. Top ranked Monkbot Bat Erdene finished second at the NJCAA Championships a year ago at 133, while the Mavericks also highlight the lineup with second rate Bat Erdene Boldma at 141. Thank you, UWW, for letting me announce the World Championships because I had no problem with those. Top matchup here comes at 184, where second ranked Cameron Page of Jamestown will face sixth ranked Chaha. Ch- Charles Small, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm just, that's for effect. Charles Small of Northwest Kansas Tech. If I can get the Mongolians right, I can certainly say Charles Small. Winner of this duel will face number six, Harper or Spartanburg Methodist. Spartanburg Methodist head coach Matt Oliver will bring two ranked wrestlers to the event with the fourth ranked Tramone Jennings at 125 and the seventh ranked Caleb Spears at 174. Harper's Michael Foy was 30 year ago at the national championships. And yes, uh, that's uh, that Michael Foy's kid. Number seven, Rochester, slight favorite over Southwestern Oregon as this duel features just two wrestlers who are ranked, and both of them are Rochester Yellow Jack. Oh, wait, Rochester. This this Rochester's in Minnesota, not in New York. Second ranked Shane Seward is one to watch at 174 for Rochester, and the winner of the duel will face either second seeded Western Wyoming or Cowley Community College. Cowley's been a little ambitious this year as they've wrestled dueled against Division I, Division II, and NAIA schools. Maybe the plan is being battle tested will help them against second seeded Western Wyoming who has seven ranked wrestlers and very lofty goals this season. Yeah, in case you're wondering, Cole Verner, the guy from the University of Wyoming who just pinned Sean Faust from NC State, yeah, he's from Western Wyoming. Returning All-American Jackson Cole, that's Jackson with an X, is one of three wrestlers ranked third in the nation. He's joined by Sam Freeman and heavyweight Landon Brown. In the women's division, Campbellsville broke through and ended King's four-year reign at the top of the women's division. I think that's from the Department of Redundancy Department. Anyway, McKendry is the top seed. They were the runners up the last two seasons, and they looked poised, poised to become just the sixth women's program to win a women's national duels title. Much like the NAIA, where numerous wrestlers from one team can be ranked at a weight class, McKendry brings 15 wrestlers to the event who appear in the most recent Women's Collegiate Wrestling Association, WCWA, rankings. Age group world medalists Alexis Porter and Alex Glaude are ranked number one, as is talented freshman Felicity Taylor at 116. Top four teams get buys here in the 12-team field, so McKendry's Hammers will await the winner of the Southern Oregon-Missouri Valley duel. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah, yes. Interestingly enough, Southern Oregon and Missouri Valley are meeting in the women's division, just like they are the NAIA division. That's kind of cool. This duel will feature five ranked wrestlers, and four of them are from Southern Oregon. Sienna Ramirez is a returning WCWA All-American for SOU. They are the Raiders, by the way. While Missouri Valley's Shamara McTeer comes in ranked ninth at 155 and was pretty accomplished on those age group levels, which means basically like juniors and such. Number four, Emmanuel will have a first round bye. The Lions have one of the nation's most exciting wrestlers in top ranked Abby Netty at 130 pounds. Cadet World Medalist Kayla Morano is a returning All-American, while Hannah Gladden is looking for a breakout season. The Lions will face the winner of the Campbellsville-Nassau duel. Fifth-seeded Campbellsville, which, as we said, was last year's WCWA champs and national duels champions, were hit hard with graduation, but still return All-Americans Michaela Campbell, Coral Sugiyama, she was an intern at USA Wrestling this summer, Alexia Foca, and Mariah Harris at 170. Nassau, which is still working on building its roster numbers for its fledgling program, will struggle in dual meets. On the bottom side, third-seeded King has been one of the nation's most successful women's college programs, putting a number of wrestlers on U.S. World and Olympic teams. While the Tornado, that's singular, have an opening round by, they can make things interesting as they'll bring 10 ranked wrestlers at seven weights with some depth to bump wrestlers around to create more favorable matchups. Returning All-Americans to watch are second-ranked Nicole Joseph at 136 and Allison Pedix at 130. She's from Nevada. King will see the winner of the dual contest between longtime participant and number six seed, the University of the Cumberlands, and first year Gannon, coached by Cumberlands alum Kristen Durkin, who went by Kristen Pacey before she got married. The Patriots will be decided favorites against the startup Golden Knights, which are in Erie, Pennsylvania. Keep an eye on returning All Americans Kellyanne Jimenez and Bridget Duty at 136, as well as Anna Naylor at 155. Second seed of Wayland Baptist has an opening round by. So the Pioneers will await the winner of the duel between seven-seeded Life and Lion, which is in Arkansas. Wayland Baptist, which is in Texas, has wrestlers ranked at six weights, including the top-ranked 101-pounders and number one Asia Ray, a junior world medalist, and number two Nina Pham. National champion Brittany Marshall. She's good. She helps secure the upper weights at 170, as does the arrival of Paige Baines, last year's national champion 191, who transferred in from Grays Harbor. Life has started becoming a national player on the women's scene as the running Eagles and coach Ashley Sword, let's like sword, like chopping people's heads off sword, 
The Running Eagles have three All-Americans last year and have three ranked wrestlers coming into the duel with Lion. The top-ranked matchup here kicks things off at 101 with ninth-ranked Faye Cherrier taking on 10th-ranked Cassidy Ramirez of Lion. So that is a rather poor representation of the TLDR. Uh, let me just say that that's, uh, that's a lot of words to read. So if you're interested in checking out the National Duels, they are on for pay-per-view at trackwrestling.com. That's what I got. I'd like to thank you for spending your time with me because the bad puns and all, you've always got time for short time. And uh, good luck to all the teams competing. 84 teams, 320, about 320 ranked wrestlers. There are more teams previewed in this podcast than there are in Division One wrestling. So, uh, booyah. That's all I got for now. Thank you. Because like I said, you've always got time. No, wait, no. My husband's my tagline. Oh, yeah. Thank you for spending your time with me because you've always got time for a short time. I'm in a bit of a goofy mood, but uh, I just love wrestling. Goodbye. The Short Time Wrestling Podcast is proudly outfitted by Compound Clothing. Shirts, singlets, custom gear orders, everything you need. Call up Cliff and the crew at cmpteamwear.com. Hey, you know what? Did you like the show? You want to hit that subscribe button, matttalkonline.com slash listen. Various different ways to subscribe to this show on your favorite podcatcher of choice. And if you're already subscribed and you're already listening and you love the show and you want to support this show and this network, matttalkonline.com slash join the team. Become a team member today.